uh, I was going to say hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Thriving Adoptees podcast, but that's not today, is it? Um, welcome to the welcome to the webinar recording, um, uh, uh, listeners. Uh, I did it again. I started the webinar and I forgot to press record. Um, so I'm here today. There's like forty odd of us, and um, uh, you're going to be hearing from uh, Danielle Godet and uh, Larray Gerald, and we're going to be talking about the. Uh, healing our primal wounds. So um, I'll, I'll give it another go, shall I, Danielle? Um, yeah. what's, what's your take on the primal wound? Well, thanks for asking again, Simon. So yes, when I first heard this term when I read Nancy Verrier's The Primal Wound. I wrote about it later in Healing Tree. There's a chapter in my book because I really, um, it stood out to me or at least it was the way I interpreted what she was saying. It was the way I interpreted what she was saying, right? Which is that it really sunk in and made sense that we are physically complete enough after nine months to leave our birth mother's bodies, right? To leave the womb and come out and be physically independent, but energetically, and also because I'm an energy practitioner for 20 years. So it made perfect sense that energetically, we're still completely connected. It's like, we're still kind of in another sort of energy womb. And then if that gets severed, if we're severed from the birth mother, that energetic womb, for lack of a better word, this is my word, is, is severed. And so uh, physically we're okay. We still have all our arms and legs, and but psychologically there's a rift, there's a severing, there's an injury in the psyche. And that really stood out to me. I, I think because I experienced it that way through my own process, I, and I'm not sure how much to say here, but I'll just say briefly through my own process, I really found it kind of like an, an injured part of my brain and affecting, I mean, now after 20 years of practicing, I can see how that, that injury has Im affected and impacted all the different parts of my life. But at the same time, I went on a very deep journey that led me into a sp spiritual journey really to discover also a self that was that is beyond my wound. So that was also huge in my healing process. So I've become familiar with that self as well. And also continuously ongoing have to be aware and alert to how that wound shows itself in my, in my life. Because I think I also talk about that in my book, that it was a kind of a blind spot and it's sort of a slow revealing of awareness to me, how it has impacted that psyche that that injury of the psyche although i am not that wound but i have that wound so i guess um i'll i'll say i'll start there yeah okay so you said beyond it yeah beyond. can can you talk a little bit more about that Mm, I guess I say beyond because of one of the sort of analogies that I consider in, if I go inward, there's all these layers. There's like these layers of myself that feel like they're myself, but not myself, right? So there's my thoughts. And if I listen to them closely, they're just thoughts. They're not really me. And if I go deeper, the thoughts are connected to emotions. The emotions are producing a lot of thoughts and, but those emotions are not me. And then if I go deeper, right, there's my beliefs and then a lot of preconceptions, but those aren't me. So all of these are like lenses over my eyes, these layers, layers, layers. And then even the wound itself is like a very, very deep, deep, deep lens. But because it's like an injury, it's, um, it's just really hard to take that lens off um it feels so real and because it's like a wound it's it's just it's a it's a wound so it's harder to work with it's less clean it's more messy but still if I go just deeper than that I I that's not the that's not the bottom most part of me that's not who I am there is another self there is an essence there that is untouched by the wound so that's why I say beyond yeah so we're talking about 
um, or well, the, the metaphor that came to my mind was actually a cross section through a tree. So, you know, when you get a cross section, if you look at down, a cross section is when you're looking down and looking down on the tree, right? And, and, and you've got these, you, you, were, you were talking about layers. So you're, you're taking it that way. I'm, to, I'm doing an eye, an eye view, a, a bird's eye view, looking down on a, on a tree stump. And I've got all those concentric rings. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you talked about thoughts, feelings, um, uh, beliefs, and we're getting smaller and smaller, but mm -hmm. right in the middle, the essence, yeah. Yeah. the essence of who we are um, is untouched. So I, the, the way I think about this is what, what's wounded is, is, is one of the questions that I ask. Mm -hmm. what, what, what's, what's wounded? And I say, well, I have felt wounded, but I'm not my feelings. Um, and I have a sense that I have been wounded, but what, what's that sense of myself? That's my, essentially, that's my ego. My, I, I feel that my, my sense of self, another word of looking at, another word for sense of self is ego. That ego is definitely, definitely damaged. And I think I, I came up with this a couple of months ago, and I did it, did it on the last, um, the last webinar. The, um, I, I, I came up with the idea of a, a, a car, we've got a crumple zone, got a crumple zone, and that, uh, so in a, in, a, in a fender bender, in a, in a, in a crash, that, 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 that um, the, the, the metal is, comes bunched in, but the, 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 the space, at the, at the space in the middle of the car is, is untouched. So, Jumping around with the metaphors, the center of the the, the you you use the word essence, the mm -hmm. essence, the always present bit mm -hmm. of, of who we are, it is beyond the kind of beyond the primal end. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I remember that our original nature. Our original nature, original and everlasting and infinite and eternal, the kind of the, the spirit, right? Yes. And since we're jumping into that, I just want to go forward and say, in my experience of trying to connect with that place and recognize that space inside of me and nurture it and and you know for me it's all about feeling keep feeling it and growing the feeling and connecting and letting it expand and mature and then I come to feel that me that me right which is I feel my true me growing bigger growing bigger and wider and that that other me that you talked about that sense of myself that's not really myself that self is feels um whereas before it felt huge it's kind of uh, the other me is is much bigger. Use the word infinite, and it can kind of embrace that self. So to use your analogy, I feel like that me is the tree itself. The tree has rings, but the tree is the tree itself is who I really am. Like I have layers, but who I really am is that huge essence, and that's just been my own experience through my feeling. Does that make sense? Can you read that? Hard so we've got we've got a, a time going along here, mm -hmm. and and you've got the um, the you've got the, um, the 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 wounded me the 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 ego bit decreasing over time, and and mm -hmm. being taken up. The true me is 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 getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, yeah? Yes. So that kind of yes. I, I like that imagery, but I'm getting stuck with the word ego because the ego doesn't develop in a child until about 18 months to two years when they get a sense of me like me no I want to do it you know that that developmental and uh -huh. and so that word is tripping me up a little bit but I I get what you mean and I like that graph um what Daniel's explaining like a tree kind of fits with me like 
um, it's like that, you know, the essence of who we are, like in that first three months, like many um, child development people might say that, that they call that the fourth trimester, um, mm -hmm. the, the first three months after birth. Mm -hmm. And so the baby doesn't know that they're separate from the mother. And like, you know, at two months, they can start to smile when, when they see their mother's face or someone else's face, or they can start seeing their hands move and then they know that that's them. So it, it kind of goes back to the same reason why we don't remove puppies from their mothers that until eight right. weeks. So it's almost like, um, I've been thinking about it more from a place of like, it's almost um, like we say a, adoption trauma, but I've been playing with the words, like it's almost like a violence of, of what nature intended. It's a separate, it's a violence towards that, like that separation that nature intended for a baby to be able to co-regulate in order to with the person that created you in order to feel that sense self of rightness of safety of um you know that uh it helps co-regulate the ability to your your own body temperature your you know um regulating the Eat the sleeping wake cycle all that kind of self-regulation kind of thing is right. like so that's the trauma and and the scarring that happens um over that premature separation I have an explanation for my primal wound that might go into what you're saying right there go um, yeah. is that okay of course <laughs> um, yeah yeah um so I was looking, I'm going to go quantum and I'm going to do a very generic explanation. So I highly recommend you do your own research on this, but there is an explanation of con consciousness and not ego consciousness, who we are by Penrose and Himeroff. And they're saying in our neurons, in our brain, there are microtubulars microtubules it's hard to say with braces in i swear people <laughs> that uh communicate with fractals and in case people don't know i write as the adopted chameleon on social media and i have written about fractals i have even talked about uh, my soul feeling like it was a fractal i use kintsugi as an explanation to see it shattering and mm -hmm. that's what i literally feel happened when that separation like danielle said so well um that separation and what you said uh that disconnect our our nervous system wasn't completely formed our physical form danielle said we're out we're we're able to be outside of the body as a living being but the rest of us the consciousness the the nervous system is still attached Mm. And the person that we have been a part of the physiological and then that some people will call it spirituality or quantum physics or whatever you're wanting to discuss at this level whatever words make you comfortable i think that that's what it is i believe that that outside of 2d three 2d and 3d consciousness this these fractals exist this is where they exist and our consciousness is inside and outside of us so when the person that gave birth to us is not there to do that for us, we go into that fight flight and eventually freeze. And that's the uh, trauma sets into the body. And as Simon said, it's not who we are, but it is part of us. And as Daniel said, you get bigger and bigger. Once you know what to look for, once you know what that trauma is, you identify it. And then we can work on it together in community and find ways to help each other. Yeah, I, I, can I just say one more thing too? Um, because I was interested about that bringing up of the word ego and I have to, you know, 
give a disclaimer, like I have, I'm not a child development researcher or anything like that. I'm just an internal self researcher. That's my, that's me. And so through my own feeling and facing and awareness, I, I feel whenever my wound shows up, I can see it more and more clearly and easily these days how I would describe it. And I've worked with a lot of people over 20 years who have trauma, not only adoptees, but different people with trauma. And I recognize something similar from anyone who had any kind of, um, any kind of abandonment or relinquishment thing when they were born, like their mother died or they were separated because they were sick and they were had to be put in a special part of the hospital. There's something similar, which is this, I feel, a magnified, a hugely magnified sense of that I. So that's, I mean, I don't know when the ego shows up, but somehow because, because I was that, that severing and yes, the safety was lost and the balance was lost. My sense of my kind of false sense of I, who I think I am is actually really big. It shows up really big. Like, you know, like you don't love me and I don't belong here and you hurt me and very big, very fast, very easily because that sense of I is like, it's like out of check. So I don't know, you know, you can call it ego, you can call it whatever. It's more like how we've come to feel it and know it, I think is important. And I feel it as this overly magnified sense of I that gets hurt easily but again this is not who that I is not who I really am but that I for me is extraordinarily hurtable I don't know what clean words we can put around it but that's how I experience it and I think also what Lorraine is saying too like we're all on the process to discover the feeling <clears throat> of that and understand how it shows up for me and how it feels for me so then we can work with it and then we can come to realize we can feel very clearly, oh, it's not, it's not me at my essence. So I just wanted to say that. I wanted to throw that out there. Yeah, that was good. The, um, you made some interesting comments uh, there about consciousness. Um, so the, uh, I'm just, just, just going to do a bit of muting. Uh, so I've got make sure everybody's off. I think I've got everybody. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. Uh, so the, the way I see consciousness, I, we're looking at a, 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 is a, the metaphor, the most useful metaphor that I've come across for, for consciousness is the, it, it is the screen. So we, uh, if we're looking at a, a, at, a, a, at a film of our life, that that film is appearing on a screen. So we have we have those moments, like Danielle's talking about when we have this e explosion of, uh, I you know I call it explosion, a, a, a volcano of uh, eruption and and fear, and I've had two 20 second bursts of very intense feelings towards my birth mother in 56 years but I remember those two 20 second bursts so this was this is when the um when the anger uh, just exploded out of me and the fear just exploded out of me that so as a, we're watching a, a movie of if I if I play back a movie of my life I can see the the, the horror moments, the horror story. Um, I can see the stuff about my birth mother. I can see the um, romantic romantic comedies, you know, like when I've got things completely wrong with girls. I can see the, the romance with my, my, my wife. I can see the, um, I don't know, the comedy of some moments with, with friends. So this this movie is changing all the time, but I I awareness I consciousness is the screen that is unchanged, no matter what the movie showing. 
the the screen is uh, the, the the screen is the metaphor for our consciousness, for the eternal and the unchangeable, on which everything happens. I am that. I am. One minute, I am. Uh, I am wounded. The next minute, I am whole. So there's the I am is the constant, and the uh, b- before the qualification of the um, wounded, whole, happy, sad, tired, drunk, um, in love, out of love. It's the I am that is constant. So that's my take on consciousness. That's what I understand by the term consciousness and and that uh, so consciousness is another word for spirit and metaphor uh, and and then the metaphor is the screen and the and the movie that's appearing on it what what lorraine can you unmute yourself and yeah uh, and and take us yeah my metaphor would be that i'm the energy i'm the unchanging energy and um, the feelings are negative, positive energies that flow through probably the, um, the those fractals that I'm talking about, that energy that they're trying to define that's at quantum levels uh, that exist around us. That's like, I'm sure a lot of adoptees can Uh, probably relate to this that you'll be going along fine and all of a sudden you'll have these intrusive thoughts come through and um, they come out of nowhere we didn't ask for it to come to the surface level but at this moment it's at the surface level whatever for whatever reason it happened Um, in that moment there is an energy that has taken us out of our normal flow so you're right we're still that same energy but our energy is being dysregulated through the physiological aspects of our body and our experience in that energy form in this physical form in the now and we have to deal with that and that's basically what trauma is is now we have to deal with this reoccurrence in our physical form that we didn't bring upon ourselves. It was something that previously happened because trauma knows no time. And so basically I'm just saying that we're in control of this energy, even though it comes at us sometimes unknowingly in the moment, we're going to have to deal with it. So um, what, What's your healing journey been like, Lorraine? Well, I kind of had a coming out of the fog before I came out of the adoptee fog. I think some people might relate to that. I uh, started coming out of the fog of just life in general. And I think that everyone has a fog. The adoptees have the term and we do have a different layer than people that stayed in their biological families. Um, mine started in 2016. I later found out that that was the year uh, that my biological mother had passed. I started working in uh, spirituality. Um, I did, I listened to my intuition a lot more and I just started signing up for classes and doing different things. I started doing Kundalini. I didn't even know what Kundalini yoga was. I mean, I, I had done a little bit since 2010, but I never really delved into the energy aspect of it because i was kind of a non-believer i'll just be honest i thought a lot of it was woo woo like you said simon there was a lot of woo woo stuff and i thought you know maybe there's some truth to it maybe there's some not some truth you know even though i'd been intuitive all my life i still had i'd question everything constantly so in this unfogging the pre unfogging i learned to really listen to my intuition and accept things sometimes that were way beyond what I knew. And I opened my mind up greatly to what could be. And then when the unfogging came and the pain came that was so unbearable, I already had tools in place. So it was like the universe had already guided me there 
to protect me. So I would have tools when it really got bad. So I'm going to say mine was a little guided and I just went with it because I was open with the flow. Yeah. I think the key word for me is, is open. Um, like that, that um, when we look at, um, if we're, if, if we are asked to describe the contents of a, a room, we never, we, we never um, say the space in it, do we? It's always about the, the items rather than the, rather than the open, open space. And that, that, that open, if that open space, I, I, you know, I, when I think of, when I think of the word spirit, I also think of the word space or, you know, like a, like a screen, a, a canvas. Mm -hmm. um, but if, if we're going with the, uh, the openness of the space, the, um, the room, that open space isn't uh, diminished by the stuff in it, in, in the room. So it, the, if that's a metaphor for, if the space is a metaphor for, for who we are, then um, our our the, the 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 feelings that come in don't upset the space. The feelings don't upset the space that we are, in the same way as the room isn't hurt if my wife comes in to it. So it's it's that. It, it, it's, ident it's identifying with the openness of the space, the open spirit that we are, rather than the thoughts and the feelings that occur within that space. Yes, I mean, we are separate, but they do affect us in a physiological way. So, you know, we do have to take care of ourselves and have the tools to deal with those things in this time. I kind of go about it as I'm an explorer. And when I'm open, I'm just out sailing the seas and I don't know what I'm going to find, but I just have to be open to whatever's out there. And it could be above, it could be a blow, it could be inside, it could be anywhere. But I have to just listen when I'm being shown that maybe there's there's a different way of understanding or feeling about something and just being open to any possibility i think is healing in and of itself have, have you read the um surrender experiment um mickey what's he called mickey singer or something he, he, goes, he surrenders have you read that daniel the, the surrender experiment it, it, it's just there uh, uh, yeah, he, he he's just uh, open to what, open to what shows up. Um, so how how do you see the kind of the body and mind, the 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 body and mind? I don't know what you call it, conglomeration, the mind, and body, soul. But how how do you how do you see that in the in the um, in the healing? The, right, the, the different elements, how they combine. Oh, how they combine? Mm -hmm. Well, in my experience, uh, the breath is the pranayama work that I do. That's how we connect the mind, body, and spirit together to create a, a whole energetic form. And sometimes the breath work can bring up things that are uncomfortable, but it's what we need to do. And that's how I work with knowing that all feelings are valid. And I, I say that in my yoga classes, all feelings are valid. Whatever you're feeling right now is a valid feeling. Just see it like a cloud, let it float by, acknowledge it, thank it, and let it go. And it takes practice, just like people would think, oh, I bet Lorraine knows how to meditate. Great. No, I don't. No, I don't. <laughs> I had to practice at it. Um, putting that positive energy in through pranayama is 
another thing that we have to practice. People think we all breathe and we're fine. No, most people don't even know how to breathe properly for just everyday life. They breathe really shallow and that's what brings on anxiety. You have to fully breathe and you have to oxygenate your blood. <laughs> There's so many things that we can do with our bodies to work on an, an energetic level as well as the physical level. But to me, it's a lot of breath work. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm just thinking that like, I, I, I swim a lot and that gets me breathing and, and, and that, uh, and um, yeah, it's, it, I feel a lot better, a lot better after a swim. I'm going to go back to the thing about the, um, the, the clouds and, and the, the, the you said the, the clouds allowing them in. And, uh, Cause I think that for me, that's, I'm into really simple stuff, right? So, when I think of something, when we, we've heard that metaphor, I don't think we can hear it in, in, enough and hear it deeply enough, but well, I can't anyway. It's that if, if, the, if the feeling is, if the feeling is anger and the feeling is a, a cloud, like a dark, stormy, cloud we I, I i find it incredible to kind of shift my um, attention shift my focus shift my identification from the cloud to the sky so the the That's sky right. is not the sky right. is not bothered about the rain we're in, in Britain, we have this thing called miserable weather. I, don't, I, 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 I think this is hilarious. Um, I, and I fall for this too, right? So when I go to the swimming, I, 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 this, this happened a year ago. I said to the woman at the, on the counter, the volunteer that works at the swimming pool, uh, how, are you, how are you? She said, um, I'm as good as the weather. Right? So, somehow in, in, uh, we've got this idea that the weather determines our mood. And it's just nuts isn't it but so we're, we're we're upset we're upset by the weather we're upset by we're, we're upset by the, the rain and we're upset by the upset clouds we're upset by the ang anger because we're identifying with the cloud rather than identifying with the sky and the sky is wide open it's not saying you cloud naff off, you know. It's 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 not ejecting the cloud. It doesn't matter. It, it it doesn't care whether it's sunny or rainy or storms or tornadoes or anything. The the cloud is the the sky is kind of untouched and it, it's just it's just sitting there, not not bothered. That's why I let them float on by. Uh, how, how would you describe your um, healing journey, Danielle, or, or or carry on with my riff if you want from from that? What's what's because what what Larey said about the cloud that led me down into this that exploration. So whichever way you want to go. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so <clears throat> I I was hurting in my life anyway because my mind was a total disaster. It was wrought with fear and anxiety and so much worry and it was uncontrollable and then I met my I had my reunion with my birth mother and it was like the straw that broke the camel's back and my mind went from that to like really scary like I was lo losing losing my grip so I felt like I need to I need to do something I kind of just felt like the most important thing and I was young you know I was just 22 at that time, 20, I was 21 when I met my birth mother. I was 22 at the time where I was like, just unraveling. Like you could be talking to me and I'd be listening with like 10% of my mind and the other 90% would just be perseverating and just wondering how anyone could just be happy at all. Just feeling like despair about just everything. And so I knew I needed it. I needed help. So I was really desperate. So then I started my own 
kind of yoga. It's, you know, body and brain. It's a Korean based tradition. But so what it opened me up to was the same as Lorraine is energy. And the energy was amazing. It was just simple exercises that let me move my energy. So as soon as I could feel myself moving energy, something in my mind started shifting without me even trying. So that was miraculous. So I was like, what is this? I gotta, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go all in because that's, that's where I was at in my life. I was like, all in. I don't want to, there's no other future unless I get this sorted out right now. And then I, I took a workshop, which was called Finding My True Self. And it, I just really, it was a huge breaking open experience where I had a deep, deep meeting with my essence or soul or whatever we want to call it. I would call it the sun. I like the sky too. I can feel the sky in my heart. But then I also feel there's the sun shining and that is the the source of me, like life itself, like the really essence of life where I am, I am just pure life and pure nature. And I met with that self and it was incredibly healing. It was the first time for me to feel even a tiny bit of self-love or that I could quiet for a moment, that I could be kind to myself for a moment. I was really in a battle with self-hatred before that. And so what that did for me was trying to continue to connect to that place because it didn't, you know, it came and then all the other stuff came crashing in like the thunder, thunderstorms came and it became a huge journey of like, oh, wait, this is a thunderstorm, but I am the sun. And this is a rain cloud, but I am the sun. And it's really, really dark right now, but the sun is still shining. And it became a long process where I feel like I grew the courage in meeting that self and, and trying to continuously strengthen my connection with that self. I grew courage to face the clouds, really, if we're gonna use that analogy. I feel like I grew some ability, some bravery to be like, all right then, if these are just clouds, then okay, kind of like you're saying, where like, let's be open, like, let's see, like, let's bring it on. I mean, be careful what I wish for. Many times I was like, bring it on, I can do it. And then, you know, another, another valley, there's been many hills and valleys in my journey, but it's all been a process of like, I'm ready to face this wound. I'm ready to face this whatever, anger, fear, whatever it is that I feel it's controlling me. Um, feeling the the feeling of not being safe, of being lonely, all anything that has been, I've just been in a discovery, like going inward and wanting to discover those clouds so that I can recognize they're just clouds. And, and then, and then I get freed from them to remember who I really am. But if I don't do that work very diligently, like very vigilantly, it's very easy to forget and think that I'm that cloud again. And that's who I am. And like you said, Simon, like identify with that self. Begin a day-to-day -day basis with the things I experience in life and work and relationships in my body and this and that. It's very easy to become the cloud again and identify with the cloud again. So I think it's an amazingly beautiful journey of awakening and remembering who I am again and again and again and again. And I've come to feel really through my healing process over the last now 24 years, I've come to feel really grateful for my primal wound and how much I suffered and can still easily, the you know, I just call those triggers. Like, oh, there was a trigger and I started to fall into the hole, but I realized that that's what's happening and I can choose the sky or the sun again and it's getting faster and easier. And I've come to really appreciate my own suffering and the wound itself, because I'm like, oh, it's guiding me to remember, to reawaken who I really am, not just understanding it, not just reading about it in a book, but really feeling it and knowing it deeper and deeper and deeper. And right now, like where I'm at, I'm really practicing trust, which I feel like is connected to surrender, like how I can just let go of those things and just sink into the sky and the sun and trust who I am. And I don't have to grab on to that, you know, that habitual desire to be 
controlling something or afraid of something or feeling unsafe. There's a lot of that that's habit or belief, as you would say, Simon. So it's a whole, the healing process has been a process of opening my eyes to the reality of what's going on inside of me and coming back again and again. And I say that, and I say that, you know, in my book and in my work, because I feel like I don't want anyone to think that it's just a quick fix. We just like going to go to the doctor and get some medicine. It's all going to go away. Like, I think we should enjoy the journey because it's a journey of remembering and discovering that sun that's always shining, it's always shining in the sky, no matter how dark it can get, the sun is there still shining. It's just my job to find it again. So that's been a beautiful, beautiful healing journey. You said that beautifully. Wow. That was really good, Danielle. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't agree more with that, that self-discovery and the times that we're sucked down sometimes we're out of our flow and all the clouds around us are dark and one of the things that i remember is this is temporary i just tell myself if it's one of those days that i have to go back to bed i'm not i'm just it's just not one of those days where i'm going to be functioning well i allow myself that time and say this is temporary and I let myself have that rest, take that pause to go ahead if I need to cry or whatever I need to do. And don't rush that part of it either. Cause yeah. that's what people do. They push away the anger. They push away the sadness. They don't want those feelings. Well, no, they're uncomfortable. Nobody wants those feelings, but they're part of life. And if we don't feel it, then we haven't really lived, have we? Right. And also I feel like when we keep not allowing ourselves to feel those, it's like we're fighting with, if we keep using the sky analogy, we're like fighting with the clouds. I don't want to feel you. I'm going to go run and hide from you. But then we never get a chance to see the sun again. So actually allowing myself to feel even the pain or the discomfort, the layers, knowing that's all they are, I can allow myself to feel my truth more and more deeply. So yeah, I'm all about allowing feeling right well that that old saying what you uh resist persist there you go <laughs> there you go <laughs> and and the sky never resists anything right right it just lets everything happen so what like I, I, have you heard this phrase um meditation is is what we are not what we do have you heard that Meditation is what we are, not what we do. It's uh, what, what I'm saying really here is, um, and it's it, it's from my favorite guy. I name check him all the time. This bloke Rupert Spira, he's just brilliant. Um, uh, he, he he says it, that's where it comes from. So what I'm thinking is right. So if this 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 space, this sky is open it doesn't need to practice at being open it doesn't need to do affirmations in the mirror i'm open i must be open it just it is open it doesn't do openness it doesn't have to try to not resist it just allows and and you know as danielle was talking about you know the the brain junk that you know to to some like another um, mentor of mine I listen to her podcast all the time. She just says uh, she's called. Uh, what's she called? It's completely gone. Um, that's what minds do. It's just what minds do. So um we 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 become i become a, a more on i have i have more on my mind so I, I i worry and then i worry about worrying and then i um start to beat myself up simon you've been on this journey 14 years and you're uh you you're still getting upset about the clouds <laughs> so uh, so it's it's worry then it's worry about worry 
and, and then it's self-blame about I haven't got this yet and then that falls away and it becomes a, a, rec a recognition I was thinking about that driving today it, it, it the, the word re it, it, you know re uh, recognition re is cognition is remembering again it's like because what does it there's some beautiful word like remembering but is coming back to where we are coming back to being back to the being back to the sky identifying with the sky not the clouds um i was also thinking about you know the the, the fog metaphor and like what what comes after the fog what 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 comes out what, what comes out what comes after the fog, right? What comes after the fog? Well, we can see our trauma. We can feel our trauma. <laughs> we we live in our trauma, and and and, and we've got a, we've got a um, uh, we've got a, a diagnosis. I talked I talked about this on the last prime the primal wound webinar I did in January. You know that the, the the primal wound as as a diagnosis it's like okay so we can we, we've got something that we can pin stuff on now um but the diagnosis for me became who i was rather than something that i had so i was the trauma and, until i kind of separated off so people have seen me doing the the diamond metaphor yeah the, the fist the metaphor for the metaphor for my because my trauma showed up I, I, as anger and then we but the, that, that, that that's not the natural shape of the hand the natural shape of the hand is open we open up and we to reveal the the the, the priceless gem that we are not this seven quid amazon um piece of glass but we're, we're separating out so this is us this is our trauma our trauma hides us we can't see our perfection we can't see our openness so putting the metaphors together um the the, the the sky i don't think i can put those two metaphors together um but what do we what do we see when we come out of the trauma uh, out of the fog we see our trauma uh and, but we're drawn what what are we drawn to well, to, to use Danielle's analogy, if, if we're the sun, we're drawn to the sun. We, we, we're drawn to the sun and then we uh, identify with the sun. We identify with the diamond. We don't identify with the trauma anymore. We've separated ourselves. Whereas when we're like this, we're clinging on, we're clinging on, we're white knuckling it. And we're, you know, as angry and separating out. I so, think that's kind of like coming out of the fog, Simon, because when the trauma, you recognize it, because if you can't see it, you don't know what it is. So you're reacting to it. You might uh, have addictions or health problems or things that are coming out that you're not fully aware of why they're happening. They're just happening. But when we're, we'd be come aware of the trauma, like you said, we're not the trauma, but the adoptees, when we're born, we have the I, Danielle said, we become the I, but we're also told that we're somebody else because we are now in strangers' homes and we don't fully know who we are because we don't have genetic mirroring, um, people that act like us, sound like us, smell like us, our senses in this realm, you know, our, our experience. So when we emerge from that fog and go to find the true self, who we are, we have to literally sometimes go, do I like this or do I not like this? I know I catch myself things that I've done. I, I don't know how many times. And I'm like, do I really want to do this? Why am I doing this? And a lot of it is just conditioning because that's, what I was supposed to do. I was filling a void for other people without knowing who I really was. I had to focus on that because that was my intention as an infant 
was to fill the void in a family that couldn't have children. So I became that. And then when I no longer had to be that, I had to kind of go back and figure out who I was. You feel the space? And now I feel space, yes. Do you, do you feel the space now? Yes. Yeah. Uh, like Danielle said, we expand, we start expanding. So we're not that tight little, that anger. We're like, oh, guess what? Anger is a normal feeling. Let it go. Look at that. That anger still exists out here, but it's not like this. And it's not right up here. It's just floating around now because I understand it as a normal feeling. I don't have to focus on it anymore. It's just a cloud just floating. And I'm like, that's okay. That's an okay feeling. Don't fight it. The, the, the metaphor that came back to me, similar kind of thing, um, was it's a British, uh, a, a British king, like, I don't know, like a, a thousand years ago, 2000 years ago, something. It was called King Canute. Uh, and he, he tried to, he tried to stop this. I remember drawing a picture of him, you know, in our history class when I was about eight, he tried to stop the tide coming in. He's tried to, you know, there's a picture, there's a picture of this bloke. I draw this picture of this King Can you with a silly little crown on. And he's he's trying to hold back. He's trying to hold back the wave. And he's it, it, trying to stop the tide coming. It's got it's like, got absolutely no chance of doing it. But he's, you know, you said what we resist. I was I was thinking, you said what what we resist persists that old saying and i thought that was really spooky because that's exactly what i was thinking but you know what we resist it's like it, it's 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 prolonging it, it's prolonging a, a civil right. war right rather you know and it's not a civil it's not civil at all it's it's an angry place to be it's very uncivil it's an uncivil war going on in our head right an uncivil war going on ahead between i shouldn't do this i shouldn't do that da, 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 da. um I, nobody loves me da, 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 i'm not lovable da, 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 and it's just going and, and what we're doing is just basically waving the white flag right we're waving the the right the, the white flag or if it's a boxing match we're throwing the towel into the ring right i'm not going to try and battle you anymore i'm I, i'm not worried about you engulfing me anymore you i was going to swear then but you know, um, we're also not looking for people to come save us anymore. We realize we're saving ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I feel like it's um mm, the important thing is that it's all about like we have we all have the sense the sense to do this, right? So even I remember when I was in the beginning, if you tell me, just let go, let it go, what you resist persists, let it go. I'd be like, ah! <laughs> I threw a lot of pots and pans. I was really frustrated in the beginning. So I think the be the first thing is we have to get to know myself, right? So Simon, I've heard you say you've had like two 20 minute bouts. I've had just a lifetime of a subtle ongoing torture. <laughs> That's my my case. And I think each one of us is on the journey to understand about our own self and then awaken these senses within us. We all have the ability to let go, see the cloud, realize I'm the sun, move my identity. Actually, it all exists within us. So I, I really strongly feel like each person's journey may be different it may look a little different but it's the journey to bring that mind back from the outside right so like you're just saying right like nobody else is gonna fix me also i can't blame anyone else for my problem i just gotta come back to me feel me look inside me be with me as be develop the sense of being comfortable and patient with the, some of those storms and discovering how like mist, like a cloud, it really does part. It really does separate when we relax, when we learn how to relax and go in. So I think we have to be very um, kind with ourselves for this journey and forgiving, forgiving because I, I know from my own journey and teaching others, sometimes we hear the tools and we hear the principles and we're like, why can't I do it? 
because I blah, blah, blah. And we like are more in a tangle. We need to be really patient and forgiving with ourselves on this journey. And just, it's the journey back to myself and it looks different for all of us. So enjoying, enjoying, enjoying awakening the sense of how to stop resisting and all of that. It's like an amazing journey of discovering I have the ability to do that. It lies within me. Like the medicine is within us. It is. Mm -hmm. And our healing isn't linear. We just have to remember that too, right? Right. That was beautiful, Daniel. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was thinking it, it, it's linear and it goes on, right? So I, I, I've broken my wrist a couple of times, right? But so I broke it and then it healed. And luckily, you know, like I, 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 it healed. It healed in itself. You know, you just put it in the pot. The pot just keeps it so it can heal. And, and look, and I was going away on holiday. I thought, I, I can't be in the on the beach and not be able to swim because i've got this you know banded you know there's um a pot on my wrist luckily it was they x-rayed it and i could go swim. but it, uh, it, the body uh, a healing the, a broken wrist it heals and then that's it, it it's it, it's done whereas this healing is a series of heal 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 heal, heal deeper deeper and deeper as we um, uh, go re-identify with, re with, the, with the sky. Forget, remember, forget. You know, it's like, I, I took, now I see it now, I don't, uh, it, it's like, it, it's going like that, that all the time. Um, and it's not once and done, but everybody sells us a once and done thing. And, and, and we think, and because we think of a metaphor, we think once and done. And it's not once and done, it's forever. Like my, uh, one of my mentors at, at the moment, she, she, I keep on hearing saying, for the rest of our life, for the rest of our life, for the rest of our life. And, 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 and it's like, it, and it just goes so against all this impatience that we have, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. <laughs> um, Thank you, Simon. Yeah, thank you. This has been nice talking with both it, it's, of you. It's been so much more fun than doing just talking at talking at 50 people. I really, you know, and like. I appreciate everybody that showed up too. I just want to say thank you all for yeah. being here. Yeah. And I don't know, um, has anybody got any, uh, any questions? I feel. Someone did leave something in the chat that. They said they can uh, get over and let go of anger, but they won't let go of injustices. And yes, we, anger is a motivator too. So just know how to use it in the healthy and proper context. So yes, you don't have to let go of injustice anger. Anybody got anything else or we'll, 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 bring, it, uh, we'll bring it in? Cool. Well, thank you for sharing the space, all of you. Um, I feel we've uh, touched some, some great stuff. And um, the, I'll, I'll ping you a, an email on probably Monday with, uh, with the replay, to link to the replay. And um, yeah. Thank I, I, you. I, I just hope that you've uh, enjoyed this kind of half as much as I've done. And, and then uh, it's going to be, a, it's been a great, been a great one. Bring us more. Appreciate you both so much. Thank you. And thank you for the space, Simon. Lots of love. Lots of love. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Good to see you, Bruce. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.